Yeah, you read that right. This is a 24 inch 1440p gaming monitor. That's a rather unique proposition and features something that I've heard plenty of people argue for recently, higher pixel density. This bad boy is rocking 123 pixels per inch, up from 109 PPI with a 27 inch 1440p display or just 92 PPI at 24 inches but at 1080p. Now, a 27 inch 4K monitor is still higher, 163 pixels per inch, but that those are, you know, pretty common. 24 inch 1440p isn't. As for the rest of the specs, this is a 165 Hz IPS panel with a claimed 350 nit peak brightness, the usual 1000 to 1 contrast ratio, around 80% of the Adobe RGB and DCI-P3 spectrums covered, and adaptive sync. This is the AOC Q24 G2A. Naturally, this rather unique panel is where we'll start. Rather obviously, this thing looks sharp AF. It's crisp and has a very marked improvement over a similarly sized 1080p pan. It's visually sharper than a 27 inch 1440p monitor and sits in the same sort of class as a 27 inch 4K panel, at least to the eye. While the PPI isn't quite the same, it feels very much like this is as much resolution as I'd need at this size. And of course, I'm sure whatever graphics card you pair with this would like to agree. When you pair that density with really pretty decent colors, you get a beautiful experience. It really is a nice thing to watch content on. Of course, you care about gaming, and on that front, it's pretty decent too. The playing experience is good, although I must admit that I've become accustomed to larger displays, so I found myself playing on this, well, a little small. It felt like I had to get a decent bit closer to see what I was doing, but of course that would be the same on a 1080p 24 inch monitor, so that isn't exactly a major concern. And my eyes are literally falling apart, so that might somewhat uh, be of a, a factor. Anyway, it felt pretty smooth, responsive, and very much easy to game up. And that is backed up by the test results from my open source response time tool, available at osrct.com by the way, which said that even with no overdrive, it still managed around a 7 millisecond average response time. Now that's roughly equivalent to 136 hertz. That's what the panel can do natively with no ghosting on average. But when you stick overdrive on medium, what I think is the best overdrive mode and the one that I would recommend you use if you pick one of these up, the average drops to either 4.8 milliseconds or 6.15 milliseconds, depending on if you include the overshoot time on a weirdly small number of relatively bad, but still not horrific results. That would be 208 hertz uh, equivalent at 4.8 milliseconds, which is well above the 165 hertz refresh rate, so that's pretty great. If you're interested though, here's what the marketing overdrive mode looks like. A sea of overshoot and really, really not worth using. Keep it on the medium setting. Input lag is also spot on, averaging 2.8 milliseconds or well below one frame, and that's exactly what I want to see. One interesting quirk for me is that the box lists this as a G-Sync monitor, as does the on-screen menu, and a look at the rear IO would make you believe that too. You've only got one display port and one HDMI port. Most monitors like this normally have at least two HDMI ports, if not things like USB-C inputs, but that's missing here. But then if you go to the extras page uh, on the on-screen menu, you'll see that this is actually just a G-Sync compatible display and does in fact work with AMD cards if you want to. It's just adaptive sync that's been validated by Nvidia, but it isn't actually a G-Sync or specifically a G-Sync Ultimate display as in where it has NVIDIA hardware inside it and only works the NVIDIA GPUs. It's a bit strange, but I can confirm it is just adaptive sync and that it works fine and that it syncs down to the usual 48 hertz before it will start duplicating frames, so all good there. Now, I mentioned colors earlier and my Spider X reports that the Q24 G2A mostly matches its claimed color gamut coverage 
close enough anyway, and actually exceeds the brightness measurements at 400 nits, up from the 350 they claim, although it does fall short on the contrast, with a maximum of 900 to 1, not quite the 1000 to 1 that AOC claims. It's still close enough and fine for an IPS panel, although if you are more sort of darker area sensitive, perhaps a VA or even an OLED might be a better shout. Color accuracy is decent, with an average delta E of 1.3, although there were a couple of less than ideal results there, although I think that's mostly thanks to the whole NAF contrast kind of thing, so I wouldn't be overly worried about that. Physically, the monitor is AOC's usual style, red accents on an otherwise dark plastic body with the AOC logo plastered on the back. You do get a fully adjustable stand with all the usual movements, tilt, height, swivel and rotation for portrait mode if you fancy, or you can stick the panel on a vase mount if you'd prefer. The stand doesn't take up much room on your desk, which is always good, and is plenty stable, so no marks off there. I've already mentioned the limited I.O., but there really isn't much there. No USB hubs, although you do have two 2 watt speakers built in. Naturally, these are pretty naff, but they exist if you want them. The only other physical thing I wanted to mention was the on-screen menu controls. They're the sort of old school style downward facing buttons, and while well, you don't have to adjust your monitor settings that much, it is still annoying to have to twist your wrist that much just to change a simple setting. The uh, sort of joystick style switch that we've come to prefer well, is, is definitely preferred. Otherwise, I'd say this is one hell of a monitor. It's well specced, performs well, and is right around the £200 price point, making it one of the cheapest 1440p 165Hz monitors on the market, let alone being in this 24 inch form factor. For those that want a higher pixel density but don't have the space for a larger display, or those that just want an upgrade with the same size they've got, this is an incredible option. Obviously the GPU requirements go up compared to something like the 25G3ZM, but so does the image quality and sharpness, and for some I'm sure that's more than worth it. This gets a solid recommendation from me, but I would love to hear what you think about it in the comments down below. Is this size better for you, or would you prefer something larger? Let me know in those comments down below. I'll also leave a global Amazon affiliate link in the description if you want to check this out. Right at the moment of filming, it's still quite new, and so it hasn't rolled out stock-wise to, well, all of the different regions. But do check out the link to see if it's available and what sort of price it is available at. Uh, where you are. Otherwise, if you want to see more videos like this one, I have plenty more monitor reviews in particular coming up shortly, do hit the subscribe button and turn on the bell notification icon. There's also plenty of other videos on the end cards if you're interested. I'll leave the whole monitor reviews playlist if you want to keep watching. And if you want to support the channel, you can pick up my hardware tools like the open source response time and latency testing tools, or you can also check out uh, things like YouTube, uh, join or memberships, Patreon, pick up a hoodie t-shirt like this one or a load of other designs I made myself or those uh, stuff like overclockers you can get affiliate links if you happen to be buying from there that's all linked in the description for you to check out otherwise that's pretty much it thanks for watching hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you all in the next video